Hi, I'm Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and in this video I'm going to explain the math behind escape velocity. Escape velocity is the minimum speed for a projectile to escape a massive object's gravitational field. Calling it velocity is actually a misnomer because it doesn't have direction. It should actually be escape speed, but I have to admit that it just sounds better to call it escape velocity. Escape velocity is cool. You'll need it if you ever want to send something far, far away never to return. For example, Romeo secretly plans to launch his physics textbook permanently away from his home planet Earth. The problem is, Romeo has seen the formula but doesn't really understand it. Luckily, it's fairly easy to derive from first principles. Yay! Let's dive in. Like many people, Romeo spends most of his time on Earth's surface and this is where he plans to launch his book. He just needs to know how fast to throw it. Romeo has tried before and every time the book left his hands, gravity pulled it back down. Even when Romeo threw the book partway to the moon, Earth's gravitational field brought it back home, so Romeo wants to be able to throw it infinitely far away. Looking at a point in between the surface and infinitely far away, we see the force of gravity pulling the book towards Earth. Gravity is the only force acting on the book, and to find the escape velocity we can consider the work done by gravity as the book moves from Earth's surface to infinitely far away. The work done by a constant force is simply the force magnitude times the displacement times cosine of the angle between them. In this case, the angle is always 180 degrees and cosine of 180 is negative 1. Nice. Unfortunately, the force of gravity is not constant. It depends on the distance from the Earth's center according to the formula Fg is equal to gmm over s squared, where g is the gravitational constant, Big M is Earth's mass, little m is the book's mass, S is the distance from Earth's center to the book, and Fg is then the magnitude of the force of gravity between Earth and the book. Since Fg varies with S, we actually need to set up an integral from S equals R at the Earth's surface to S equals infinity when the book is infinitely far away. Evaluating this integral is actually fairly easy. G, big M, and little m are constants, as is cosine of 180 degrees, and I bring them out of the integral, which leaves only 1 over s squared ds. I can integrate this, getting negative 1 over s, and then evaluate to find that the total work done by gravity, when the book moves from r to infinitely far away, is equal to negative gmm over r. Then I use the work energy theorem, the net work is equal to delta k, to relate the work done by gravity to the book's speed. The only force acting on the book is gravity, so the net work, or total work, is just the work done by gravity, which is gmm over r. Delta k is k final minus k initial. Expanding these terms gives gmm over r is equal to 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. v final is zero because we want to find the minimum v initial for the book to completely escape Earth's gravitational field and that corresponds to giving the book just as much initial kinetic energy as the work that gravity will do to slow the book down while it's hurtling away. The book's mass cancels out, as do the negative signs on both sides, so I just multiply by 2 and then take the square root to find that v initial is the square root of 2gm over r. So the escape velocity depends on the universal gravitational constant, the mass of whichever massive object, <coughs> planet, you're escaping from, and the distance at object's center. Now Romeo has some work to do. <laughs> I'm Scott Redmond, and I help students pass physics. Visit redmondphysicstutoring.com for details.